What's going on you guys, it's 5 Season Sports checking back with another video and now that spring ball is over and the season is right around the corner, I couldn't resist but to give my take on the potential starters for the Colorado Buffaloes this season. Yeah. Get ready, because we have a loaded roster filled with solid players, so I can't imagine how tough it'll be for the coaching staff to come up with a depth chart for week one against TCU. But before we get into it, if you enjoy the content on the channel, hit that like button like it stole something from you, and make sure you subscribe so you can stay in the loop every time we drop a new video. So let's kick things off with the wide receivers in this segment. At the X, I have Javon Antonio, and right behind him is Jalen Ellis. These guys are massive targets and will probably come down with the ball 9 times out of 10 against any opponent. Backing them up, I have Amarion Miller, a freshman who already stands at 6'2", 200. With this size and build reminding me of Adam Thielen, I really think he'll be a valuable asset when either Antonio or Ellis need a breather or if they have different assignments on the field. Now in the slot, we have a cheat code in Travis Hunter. We all know what Travis can do when the ball's in his hands. He'll basically leave the defense scratching their heads, wondering what he'll do next, and he'll probably do a TikTok dance after he does it. Although Hunter is interchangeable and can eat anywhere in the wide receiver room, I place him in the slot for now. Tavares Dawson and potentially Caleb Mathis will form the backbone of the slot receiver position, and trust me when I say DBs in the slot will have a tough time guarding against Dawson and Hunter. Also, Caleb Mathis with his smooth route running skills make him a valuable addition to the lineup. He plays bigger than he looks, and he doesn't waste steps at the line of scrimmage. But with that being said, let's keep an eye out for Mathis to be redshirted before reaching that third or fourth game threshold. Shifting gears to the next slot, we have Jimmy Horn Jr. With him and the rest of the receivers on the roster, it's hard for me to believe that Sean Lewis won't be running four or five receiver sets on offense. Therefore, if we do see a tight end in the game, we should anticipate them primarily focused on blocking or finding seams and gaps in the defense to exploit for huge gains. Cameron Rising from Utah did a really good job with this last season using Dalton Kincaid, and he just got drafted by the Bills. But keeping this in mind, a crazy idea would be using Javon Antonio at tight end, but realistically speaking, it'll most likely be Louis Passarello, but you get the point. So getting back to Jimmy, him and Willie Gaines will be a major problem for opposing defenses. They bring grit, hunger, and the ability to gain yards in large chunks. If you watched JSU football last season, you know Willie Gaines is really a dog, and he will make a play whether you're expecting it or not. He just has that it factor. Plus, him and Shador already have that chemistry on the field, so it'll be fun to see him in open space and even on kickoff returns. And let's not forget about Adam Hopkins, a promising 6 foot 170 freshman who's eager to learn the offense and join this pack of dogs. Hopkins is bound to become a monster with these two leading the way and teaching him all the ropes. Moving on to the Z receiver, we have Xavier Weaver and Cormani McLean. Weaver is an automatic go-to target. Considering his experience and crazy ball skills after the catch, I have a strong feeling he'll become Shador's favorite receiver, as he can pretty much run any number on the route tree and make it look easy. Armani McLean could be an honorable mention, because I know Coach Prime is ready to see what he can do on both sides of the ball just like Travis Hunter. And ironically, McLean and Travis share almost the same measurables. They both come in at 165, with McLean edging out Hunter by 1 inch at 6'2". But now that I think about it, Travis might be around 170 by now, so once that training table and weight protein kicks in, he should be around 180 and by then mentoring the younger guys to get their weight up. And as you can see, I've also added my prediction for the offensive line. But if you watch my videos in the past, you know I usually focus more on skill positions in the defensive line, so I don't dive too deep into the O-line, but I definitely want to hear your opinions on the offensive line and where you place some of these guys to improve the lineup. Or would you keep it the same? Join the conversation and let me know what you guys think, because I know some of you guys may have more knowledge on the O-line than I do. And of course, you already know Shador is starting. He's probably a top 5 QB in the Pac-12 and he hasn't even played a game yet. I expect really big things from him this season with all the energy he's been putting out, so hopefully he can back it up and make those split decisions once those linebackers and edge rushers are coming full speed. And speaking of full speed, the running back room is full of speed and power. Alton McCaskill, Cavassier Smoke, and Dylan Edwards. And let me drop this one on you guys. Dylan might just shake things up by playing wide receiver and possibly being used in some jet sweeps. So let's keep an eye out for that. Now here's a heads up. This is only part one. 
I'll be diving into the defensive lineup in part two, and trust me, feathers will be ruffled. But before we get there, I want to hear your thoughts on the offensive lineup, so don't hold back. Drop your comments below and let me know who you think should start, or how you would shake up this lineup so Colorado can beat every team by 60 in the Pac-12.